Hello everyone, hope you're having the most wonderful day today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. For today's video, we're going to discuss some more of the worst restaurants to be featured on Kitchen Nightmares and review how they're doing now. So, sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get right into the content guys. Sam's Mediterranean Kebab Room Gordon Ramsay heads over to Sam's Mediterranean Kebab Room in Monrovia, California to rescue it from closure. Previously working at the restaurant for over a decade, Sam Najjar decided to purchase the business in 1997 with the help of his family. While the business was good in the beginning, it slowed down with time which forced Najjar to fire most of his staff to reduce costs. Aside from the restaurant being $70,000 in debt, the business's staff only consists of the owner's family including his wife and children. Due to the fact that they're practically forced to work at the restaurant, they're often bitter and argue in front of customers. Considering that the place was months away from closing down, Najjar decided to call out to Ramsey for some guidance. Upon his eventual arrival, Ramsey's revealed that the owner's children were grueling 12-hour shifts for 7 days a week and justifiably don't want to work there anymore. All of them have dreams and aspirations, but they're blocked from realizing them since they're stuck supporting their father's failing business. To make matters worse, they aren't even paid to do what they're doing since Najjar claims that letting them stay at his home for free is payment enough. Sitting down to order some food, Ramsey gets the vegetable combo which tasted dreadful, lamb shank that looked anemic, and steak with shrimp that was overcooked, leaving him with abundant levels of disappointment. Calling the staff together to give him his criticism on the awful meals he was just served, the chef openly admits that he's given up. Later on, the famous chef attempts to observe the dinner service and is disgusted by what he sees. Not only is there moldy food in the kitchen, but the walk-in freezer has buckets worth of chopped parsley, bendy celery, soft cucumbers, and rotten lettuce. What's more, the kitchen tries to send out raw chicken to a paying customer since the chef assumed that since it looked cooked on the outside that it was the same on the inside. At this point, the family broke into an uproarious argument which forced the Kitchen Nightmares host to shut things down. Having a chat with the owner's children the following day, Ramsey urges them to be honest with their father about the fact that they want to be more independent. Despite the fact that Najjar was resistant to let them pursue their own careers, he eventually changes his mind and the family has a tearful moment. Fast forward to the end of the episode after Ramsey gave the staff cooking lessons, it was finally time to renovate the place. After several hours of hard work, the famous chef and his team gave the restaurant one of the biggest and most expensive makeovers yet. Modernizing the place with beautiful carpets, freshly painted walls, new chairs, and other furniture, the business was finally given the second chance it needed. Months after the taping of this episode, Najjar gave his children time off and planned to hire new staff. Unfortunately, the restaurant closed down in January of 2014 since it didn't do much better after the renovations were made. According to the owner, they did get a surge in business for around 2 weeks, but it was by no means a long-term boost. Thankfully, instead of placing the blame on Ramsey for his failure, Najjar explained that his business simply couldn't compete with the other restaurants in the area. Yanni's Greek Restaurant for his season 6 episode, Gordon Ramsay heads over to Yanni's Greek restaurant in Seattle, Washington to bring it back on his feet. Owned by Peter Agostio since 2007, the business was previously owned by his father who opened it in 1994. Peter can be described as someone who's controlling, hard-headed, and constantly yells at everyone around him. Hiring both of his daughters to work at the restaurant, they've only made the work environment that much more toxic. While Elise acts much like her father, Taria is overly emotional and cries for the dumbest of reasons. Even though the business may have been successful at one point, their customer base has dwindled down and their debts have risen. Not knowing how else to move forward, the owner called out to Ramsey for some professional guidance. Unlike most episodes, Ramsey first meets with Peter at a coffee shop who reveals that the restaurant is losing a staggering $10,000 a month. He also informs the famous chef that his family all work at the restaurant to cut costs, but this has caused them to have little dedication. Finally arriving later on, Ramsey is greeted by Karen and the owner's daughters, who he sits down with to have a chat. As emotional as ever, Tadia starts tearing up as Karen discusses the fact that the restaurant has been struggling for years. Aside from the decor looking awfully outdated, the food is constantly being complained about, but the owner can care less. Sitting down to taste test the food, Ramsey scans the 6 page long menu and orders a collection of dishes. Getting some pumpkin hummus that tasted ghastly, some moussaka that was bitter and undercooked, as well as a yudo dish that was drenched in sauce, Ramsey was left feeling disappointed. Confronting the owner and Ali soon after about his piss poor meal, they get extremely defensive about his criticisms. Observing the dinner service later on, it would be an understatement to describe the whole thing as chaotic. Not only were Peter and his first daughter butting heads, but tons of food was being sent back and thrown in the trash which cost them hundreds. As all this chaos unfolded, Ramsey decided to inspect the storage and found tons of packages with no dates or labels on them as well as raw meat stored next to cooked meat. What's more, after coming across a padlocked fridge, he notices that it's filled with moldy beef and chicken that's gone bad. 
horrified by the state of the restaurant, Ramsey forces the staff to shut things down out of health concerns. Coming back the following day, the owner admits to the famous chef that he was embarrassed to have to end the service early, but says that things weren't as bad as Ramsey made it out to be. Failing to see how hazardous the kitchen is to his patrons, Peter would much rather put all the blame on his staff. Justifiably frustrated by the lack of accountability, Ramsey threatens to leave which prompts the owner to finally admit that things need to change. Once the Kitchen Nightmares host got everyone on the right track, he was ready to move into the renovation phase. Bringing down the 64 item menu down to 21, Ramsey also gave the dining room a complete makeover by painting the walls new colors, adding beautiful decor and nice furniture. Post Kitchen Nightmares, the owner decided to stick to the changes Ramsey made, which was the right decision to make. Both of his daughters have improved greatly, with Elise acting more maturely and Taria smiling rather than crying. Still open to this day, the reviews on Yelp and TripAdvisor are fantastic, making this rescue a great success. Park's Edge As our final entry, we're going to discuss a restaurant that Gordon Ramsay visited in Inman Park, Georgia called Park's Edge. Owned by two friends named Richard and Jorge, they've been running the place for the last three years. Unfortunately, since they have no experience in the industry, their business thus far hasn't been the smoothest. Not only is the food overcomplicated and the staff overworked, but the restaurant was forced to close down twice by the health department for health code violations. What's worse, when Richard decided to sell liquor at the restaurant without a license and was interviewed by the news about it, he insinuated that the neighborhood was racist. As a result, the restaurant has been heavily alienated from the local community, which is why they barely make any money. With little to no options left, the owners were forced to call out to Ramsey and his team for some much needed help. When he finally arrives, he sits down with the owners and tries to get a grasp of the issues at hand. Claiming that the neighborhood as well as their past mistakes are the problem, the owners assure the famous chef that their food isn't the issue. Putting this to the test, Ramsey sits down and scans the menu that has a mix of Mexican, Asian, and Indian dishes on it, which is pretty confusing. Ordering a grilled salad that tasted nasty, oysters that were rancid, and a salmon dish that was awfully bland, Ramsey was left feeling appalled with his experience. Heading into the kitchen to give feedback on his terrible meal, Jorge explains that even though he went to culinary school, he wasn't properly trained on how to work in a restaurant. Leaving and returning the following day for the dinner service, Ramsey was utterly unimpressed with what he witnessed. Starting by observing things in the kitchen, most of the staff seemed to be hard at work except for Jorge who looked perplexed and overwhelmed. As food started to be sent out, most of the patrons seemed unimpressed with what they had received and made a list of complaints. While all of this was happening on the inside, Richard was hiding out in the back, smoking and doing anything but his job. Holding a staff meeting the following day with the owners watching through CCTV cameras, the Kitchen Nightmares host is told that Richard is the biggest problem. Aside from being completely hands off with guests, he drinks on the job and has poor communication skills. Additionally, they point out that Jorge is disrespectful and lashes out at them, which makes him really hard to work with. Touched by what they had heard, the owners apologized for their behavior and promised to change for the sake of the restaurant. Fast forward to after the changes were made, the dining room got a complete makeover, the menu was simplified, and Richard apologized on the news for his past mistakes, which meant that Park's Edge was given a second chance. Even though the owners decided to embrace most of the changes Ramsey made, things didn't work out. After their lease ran out in November of 2013, the owners decided to reopen in a new location, but this never happened. Well, that'll be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a good one, guys.